This is a field fox. I have it connected to an antenna, the SA input. I also have an external preamp that I'm biasing with the field fox. That's because the 5G signal in my area is really weak. And this is a new signal that we just learned about. So let's start with LTE. I know we have an LTE signal at a reasonable strength here at 751 megahertz. So there it is. And now let's go into OTA mode to test it. Let's switch modes to OTA. Start off with LT. First step is to turn on the frequency. So I say center, 751 meg. And there it is. There is my signal at 751 meg. Um, and I, I am, I'm not only locked to GPS, I have my frequency reference set to GPS, but it's my understanding that um, that's not available in your area. So let's go ahead, because you're inside, um, sorry, let's go ahead and turn on, turn off the frequency reference locking to GPS. We'll go to internal. And what happens is it'll still um, pick up the signal, but you can see the frequency error will get larger. It was, you know, it's now around 100 hertz versus closer to zero. It, it's kind of a best practice if you can do it. It helps and also makes it sometimes faster. But if you can't, when you have a reasonably strong signal and clean signal, it's able to demodulate it fine. We also have LTE at 739 megahertz, and there's different bands available. But there's also um, 739. So now let's switch to 5GNR. And I just learned that we have this 5GNR signal. I don't really know much about the status of it. And it's at 782 meg. And there you can see it at 782. So then, oh, sorry, not 782, 872. I don't know what that one is. Maybe closer to an LTE. There's 872. It's a bit weaker, but we'll go into back to OTA, 5GNR. First step is type in the frequency. I go to frequency center. 872 megahertz. Um, and I'm going to then also go ahead and set the subcarrier spacing, which because I know it's 15 kilohertz in this case. And um, there it is, the signal. And, and I'm not locked to GPS. Again, it, it's helpful since I have it available. Um, I will go ahead and lock to it. But it's not necessary. It should help reduce my frequency error in some cases. And um, then also, if we want to go into 5G and our EVM conducted, um, it works best for a clean signal. That's a conducted signal, signal single cell. Um, but let's try it again here. We do frequency 872 meg. And then I go to mesh setup. I believe this is a 5 megahertz signal. And I will set that up. I'll go under SSB. And I'll um, disable auto detection to, just to speed it up here. And I've turned that off. And I think um, I tested this earlier. I need an attenuation of zero to help this work. And there's the signal. And I wanted to kind of point out here that uh, these are pretty high EVM numbers. It'll come back in a minute. It's like 80, 90%. We don't really know much about the signal. I At least I don't have much knowledge of it. And it's over the air, and whether it's just a test signal, it's a real signal, we don't know that. Um, I will try to do the same experiment with a conducted signal with my MXG with a clean signal and show you the reasonable parameters. But that system with MXG is in the office, and I have to get somebody to make some connections for me. But I wanted to share this with you at this point. So the key things were to um, set the frequency first, and then also set the bandwidth. And if you want to, um, if you know the subcarrier spacing, to set it and try turning auto detection off to see if you can get the 5 GNR working. And also same for LTE, it should um, work fine if you can set up the, you know, the frequency right and you can experiment with attenuation and also the preamp.